Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. When I hear such songs, then there is only one thing that comes to me. I feel like looking for a hiding place to just wait in the presence of the Lord. Lord, I give you my heart. This is my desire. Have your way in me. So, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. This is a prayer of consecration. I live for this is a praise, prayer of consecration. Lord. This is a prayer of dedication of one's life and all that is within you to the only person who so loved you that he condescended from heaven and came down to earth. He gave up his throne and his glory. He gave up his equality with the Father and took upon him the form of a servant. And he that knew no sin became sin was crucified on the cross. He was put to death in a very shameful way. But all because he needed to reconcile us unto the Father. If he so gave all of his for us, There is nothing greater that we can give to him but to give him our very life which he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Lord, I give you my life. Make this your prayer tonight. I believe the Lord is speaking to us individually. When he rescued and saved you, he saved you as an individual. What is your heart's desire? What is your heart's cry? What is your utmost prayer? Yes, Father, tonight we have come. We have come with open hearts. We have come with open hearts. We are hungry and thirsting for you. Lord, tonight feel us. Even as you feed us, quicken our spirit man to receive your engrafted word which is able to save our souls and to give us an inheritance amongst the saints. Let your glory be revealed in the midst of us tonight. For we know you are here by your spirit. Thank you, Father, for your presence in the midst of us. Thank you that this gathering is unto you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When we come to the house of the Lord, he said, you have a song, you have a worship, you have a prayer. Let's just bring it together and let's worship the Lord. Amen. Church, I can tell you for certainty, that before Jesus returns to planet earth again, this church of the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
that was born in a great manifestation and demonstration of the resurrection power of God is going to go home in the greatest manifestation and demonstration of the power of God the manifestation of the glory of God that the world has ever seen Amen Ministers like our dear instrumentalist here the days come when when the church gathers even without any voice singing they would minister to the Lord amen the heavens will be open amen men and women will be quickened even the sick the sinner would come to the altar of God convicted because of their worship and the manifestation of God's glory amen those days are coming very fast upon the body of Christ it is such a unique and a peculiar time for the church to be alive in the history of this world amen tonight we continue on our subject of working well together with God amen I want us to turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 3, reading from verse 14 to verse 15. The title of tonight's message is You Cannot Work Well Together with God If He Has Not Appointed You. Amen. Have you ever seen any employee go to work in a company where he is not being employed as an employee? Mark chapter 4, chapter 3, reading from verse 14 to 15. And he ordained 12 that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. Amen. Jesus himself ordained the twelve. What was the primary purpose for which he ordained the twelve? The number one was that they might what? Be with him. Number two, that he might send them forth to preach and number three to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils amen many times a lot of us as christians overlook the primary purpose for which he called us and we get consumed with activity forgetting the primary purpose he said he ordained 12 that they might be where with him amen were they to go out on their own accord no that he might do what? Send them forth. Amen. Who is the Lord of the harvest? Jesus. Amen. He said we should pray, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. That he might do what? Send laborers into the field. Amen. The harvest is his. He is the Lord of the harvest amen it is his harvest it is his field amen but he requires of us that we come to him and as faithful stewards he sends us out amen 
But if we cannot be with him, if we cannot stay with him, we will not hear his instruction. We will not be able to obey him if we are not with him. Is that very clear? Is that very clear? For those of you who work in businesses and companies and their bosses, you realize that you don't go doing what you want to do if you want to be a loyal and a faithful and a very good and efficient and effective employee. But you go doing what they would want you to do. Amen. If you have been signed on into a football club called Barcelona, then you are expected to train and to prepare and to play excellent football. Amen. But if you are signed on into a club called Barcelona FC, football club, and when you get the ball, you are bouncing it like a basketball. And you want to play basketball, then you are the wrong place. True or false? It's so simple yet it is a problem for many people amen let's turn our bibles to luke chapter 10 verse 38 to verse 42 now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named martha received him into her house and she had a sister called mary which also sat at jesus's feet and heard his word but Martha was cumbered about much seven and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Beat her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. What was Mary doing when Martha was encumbering herself with so much? Mary was with what? The Lord. Amen. And he ordained twelve that they might be with him, that he might send them forth. If you go to the book of Jeremiah and you study on the prophets, the Bible talks about some prophets, false prophets. He said, I send them not, yet what? They run. I don't want to go into that. He said, I send them not, yet they do what? They run. So, running is not an, a, a sign as the prophets are running, it's not a sign that they are being what? Mightly used. Amen? But if he sends them and they run, then they are running aright. Amen? But how can we be with the Lord? What does it take to be with the Lord? We are tempted to feel very guilty when we we are not so involved or encumbered with so many things to the point that we ignore being with the lord amen but when we are with him our lives are transformed our will is renewed our minds are renewed and we are filled with the knowledge of his will with the knowledge of his purpose with the knowledge of his plans and therefore when we run because he's bidding us run we are running aright when we walk because he's bidding us to walk we are walking aright amen philippians chapter 2 verse 13 
For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his pleasure. Amen. It is not God who is working in you to do two things in you, but to make you willing to do of your pleasure. But when he works in you to bring you to the place of willing, he brings you a place to a place of willing to do his pleasure. Amen. Is that very clear? That is so critical. If you have a housemaid or a servant and you ask her to prepare porridge but she is the world's number one chef for jollof rice and you asked her you employed her you asked her to prepare porridge for you and she prepared you her signature meal jollof rice I can see Moses shaking his head. What does the shaking of the head mean? You are saying no. But it is the best jollof rice she's prepared. Caleb, is that acceptable? But it's the best, the number one in the world. That's her signature meal. Amen. So if we can't accept that in the natural then we cannot accept that in the kingdom of God. Is that very clear? Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. I'm not running with this at all because I want it to sink very deep into our hearts, into our spirits. Amen. It is the foundation for faithfulness in stewardship. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. Paul is saying that Let me just read the verse one first. It says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Amen. Maybe this is not too clear. Let's go to 2 Timothy um, chapter 1. We'll come back to Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 1 verse and verse 3 it reads Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus and therefore based on this Paul says in the verse 3 I thank God whom I saved from my forefathers with pure conscience. Pure conscience. Amen. Let's come back to Galatians chapter 1 verse 10. Paul says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Amen. If God has called him to be with the Lord, that the Lord would send him forth, then what is Paul supposed to be doing? Who is Paul supposed to be pleasing? God who has called him, like he said in Timothy, from the dead. Amen. Amen. When Paul was called by the Lord, the Bible says, 
that God sent his servants to him. And he said, go and I will show him the many things that he would suffer for my sake. And he said, I would send him to the Gentiles, but he would suffer so many things for my sake. Amen. God had shown him and revealed to him his will and his plan and his purpose for his life. Amen. And therefore, when the prophet Agabus took his belt one day and said, the person who owns this belt, the way I have tied my hands and all of that, as that person goes to Jerusalem, they would persecute this person. You would suffer trouble and affliction. Paul's response to that was that, I am not only willing, none of these things move me, he said, but I am not only willing to suffer these things for the sake of my Lord, but I am prepared to even die for him. Amen. Because he was aware of these things that they were going to come. Amen. He knew they would come. It is the will of the Father revealed to him because he has been with the Father, because he has been with the Lord. Amen. He knew the will of the Lord and the Lord had sent him forth. So if his work was not finished, as he obeys the Lord, he was going nowhere. You can stone him and drag him out of the city, assuming that he is dead and you are dumping his body out of the city, but it is not enough because the plan and the purpose of God for his life in which he was walking was not finished yet. Amen. This is what makes the disciples of old say things like, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. This is what made Paul pray in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. And I would like us to read his prayer there. Chapter 3, verse 10. He said, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. He said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Amen. Let's start from verse 7 it says but what things were gained to me those things are counted loss for christ yes doubtless and i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dang that i may win christ was he seeking to win the applause of men was he seeking to win the popularity of men? Was he seeking to win anything in this world? He said that I may win Christ. If you are with him, there is only one person you can win. And that is Christ himself. Amen. If you are somewhere else, then you can be thinking and seeking after winning something else. But if you are with him, like Mary was with him, then for you it is Christ and Christ alone. Amen. And being found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death. Amen. You can never know Christ if you are not with him. You cannot know someone from the distance. The closer you are to any person, be it your siblings or friends or parents or teachers or superiors or supervisors, whoever, the closer you are to those people, the more intimately you get to know them. Amen? And you get to know the things that displease them and the things that 
pleasure them. Amen? And when you get to know someone so intimately, then you always desire to please that person. Amen? But if the person is just someone that is just an acquaintance, and you don't really know the person, there is no way you can easily please the person. Amen. John chapter 12, verse 43. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Why? For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Amen. Paul said, I have only one desire to please my Lord. If I want any praise, I want the praise of my Lord. Amen. But the chief rulers, they believed on him. But they did not confess him. And the only reason why they did not confess him is because if they confess him, they would lose the praise of men. And they prefer and they value and they treasure the praise of men. This world system more than the praise of God. Amen. When you have stayed with him, when you have walked with him, when you have lived with him, when you have fellowshiped with him, and the Father, and the Son, and the Spirit, and his word, there is no praise in this world system. There is no honor in this world system. There is no elevation in this world system that would mean anything to you. Amen church i urge us as christians like paul said god whom i serve with a pure conscience i urge us let's look into our lives and examine ourselves once again martha was so encumbered with many things and she was wondering why she was not being praised for that. Paul said, If I yet please men, then I should not be the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's turn our Bibles to John chapter 15 as I tie this all together. It says, Ye are my friends. Oh, let me start from verse 13. I love that. It says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And I believe that this is the basis for which Amanda sang the song she sang. That Lord, I give you my life. Verse 14. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. But how can he command you if you are not with him? How can you hear his command if you are not with him? Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knows not what his Lord does. But I, called, I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Verse 16, he says, you have not chosen me. We have not chosen him. He says, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That you should go forth 
and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you amen there is a place where every request we make of the father we receive amen and that place is that place where we are basking in the will of the father where we are lying down in the will of the father where all that fills our mind and our hearts is the knowledge of the will of the father amen so when we ask for it to be done on earth as it is in heaven we will see it done on earth as it is in heaven amen he didn't say that it, it shall be done on earth then it shall be done in heaven as it is in heaven let it be done on earth amen the will is there and if we can bask in it and ask for that exact will then it comes to pass on earth so we can stand on a platform and on a place where he says whatsoever we shall ask of the father in his name he would give it to us amen it is only by working with him so closely that we can be filled with the knowledge of his will because he would instruct us he would direct us we will not stray we will not misstep but we will do only the things that are pleasing in his sight amen you want a scripture to back what i just said first john chapter 5 verse 14 and verse 15 and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he hears us and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him amen there is no greater place of rest and security of peace and joy to be in than to be in that place where you know that the things that you ask of the father in the name of jesus you receive them because you are asking for the very will of god that he has purposed for you for this life amen amen it is a place of rest amen it is a place of confidence it is a place of peace peace doesn't mean that there will not be turbulence all around you peace doesn't mean that there will not be challenges coming your way but in that place of rest and peace and confidence it is because you know you are standing in the will of the father that you are with him and he has covenanted with you that he would never ever leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of the age amen he rules by the war of the mighty Red Sea, and he said, I will lead you. Put your trust in me, put your trust in me. He rose by the water of the mighty Red Sea. And he 
And he said, I will lead you. Put your trust in me. Put your trust in me. How great is our God. How great is his name He is the greatest of all Forever the same back the water of the mighty Red Sea and he said I will lead you put your trust in me put your trust in me he rose back the water of the mighty red sea you are God and you said you would leave we put our trust in you we put our trust in you you roll back the water of the mighty red sea And you said you would lead us. We put our trust in you. We put our trust in you. He has covenanted with us that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He has covenanted with us that even if the heavens and the earth be removed not an iota of his promises to us would fail because he is the God that keepeth covenant unto a thousand generations he said as he was in the days of old even so he is here today and tomorrow he shall be the same Oh, how he yearns for us to be with him. Moses said, If your presence will not go with me, do not lead me hers. Because he knew the significance and the very importance to be with him. David said, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me, O Lord. But renew within me a right spirit that I might serve you with a pure conscience. Oh, how he yearns for us to be with him. Talk to the Father tonight. Talk to the Father tonight. In your own way, speak to the Father. Before I came to church tonight, I was calling a friend. And I called him several times and he was not picking the phone. 
But later on, he picked the phone and I, he said to me without my saying anything, he said, I was very busily watching the Chelsea match and the match was hot. That is why I didn't pick your phone. I didn't pick your call. But now the match is over. And Chelsea has won. So I'm happy. That's why I'm now picking your call. It means to me that my call, the value of my call to him is less important than the outcome of a football match. So it means that even if I was in a very desperate situation, critical and I needed his intervention, he's saying, wait. And I'm done with Chelsea watching Chelsea I'll respond to you it is very easy to be encumbered with many things and overlook our being with him but he desires for us to be with him so that he might send us forth so that our works will be the works of a faithful steward who does the will of his master talk to the father tonight talk to the father tonight pray to the father tonight for grace and mercy to set aside the things that become an encumbrance in your life that prevents you from being with him our father and our god tonight we thank you we give you praise and we give you glory that you have shed light O oh god on how important it is for us to be with you because it is you who works in us mightly both to will and to do of your good pleasure for you said without you we can do nothing Dear Father, we pray for grace and mercy that the things that choke us and prevent us from being with you, we would give up and would cause to be removed from our lives. That we would consciously know that we are with you and we would bask in your presence at all times and everywhere, knowing that you would never leave us nor forsake us father we thank you tonight we give you praise we give you glory thank you lord in jesus mighty name amen thank you for listening to the message visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.